what's happening guys? Um, sorry about the noise of the van. I'm driving, I'm in a massive rush. So I've been invited by River Living to come down to the River Midway today, where they, uh, they're they shooting some fight nets and some other nets um, for, for low water, and then we're gonna go back this afternoon and see what we get. Um, I mentioned this the other day when I was on my sib that um, I've been invited by a company to come and, come and do this. Now, uh, they do get a lot of bad publicity off of anglers because they're the sort of people, they, they, this is the company, it's the, the sort of people that will shut parts of the shoreline, whether it be rivers, estuaries, beaches, whatever, for, um, sorry, I'm just, I'm driving, um, f for like uh, nursery areas, for, for bass and other species of fish to, um, well, to thrive, really, to sort of try and get the stocks back up. Now, me personally, I think it's a good thing. Um, and, and I don't think it's a good thing just because they've invited me. Why, why wouldn't it be a good thing? Better for anglers, better for the environment, just, just better all round. Um, yes, all right, it's going to annoy a couple of people. Let me shut my windows. It's going to annoy a couple of people because they can't go and fish their normal spots where they've fished for, for years. But the thing is, it's, 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 it's bad to say, but it is what it is. It is one of them things. You're going to have to get in your car and go around the other side of the river. Um, or places like that. So today, again, this is all, I don't know a lot of information at the moment. I don't know enough information, um, which I will find out more today, so I'm not talking absolute rubbish. Um, but basically, we are going to shoot the fike net and some other kinds of nets, I think, um, on, on a stretch of the river that I fished all of my life. I grew up fishing here as a kid. So to go and put a little net out on this river and come back later on and see what species are in there is, well, it's amazing. It's, I've always looked at the river midway, always, and it's always been, I know I don't fish it a lot anymore because I can drive now and there's, there's plenty of better fish for me to travel further and further away. So uh, that's what I like doing. But growing up, this was the first, I, I caught my first ever fish in this river. It is, it is a special place to me, it is. Even though it's just full of whiting and crabs at the moment. Um, but today we're gonna find out, hopefully different, that it's not. Um, hopefully there's gonna be all sorts of things in this net. And I have said, um, don't be surprised if we find some freshwater species in in the next today. Um, I don't know what species. They're, they're, they're thinking maybe roach, things like that. But we'll see. Um, so yeah, I've always wanted to see. I've always wanted to put a net through the medway and see what comes up. Always. Now I know there's still a couple of trawlers that are allowed to trawl in the medway, the Freeman of the River or whatever they're called. Um, but I don't know what they get in their nets. I remember a few years ago off of Gillingham Pier, there was a wolffish caught, a very small wolffish which is like normally caught in the deep dark depths of Norway. Um, oh, there's been a few other surprises. To be fair, there was a fullback ray around here a couple of weeks ago that I saw on Facebook, which that's a long way up river. Um, wait, that is a long, long way up river. Um, so yeah, who, who knows? I am really, really am buzzing for this and I am gonna try and make it as interesting as possible with enough of the right information, not just me talking crap all day like I normally do when I go fishing. Um, but right, listen, I'm gonna crack on now and get there. Um, I'm gonna meet the lads, have a, have a quick chat, see what the crack is, and then I'll get filming, show you what it's all about, show you what we're doing. Um, obviously, we'll shoot the nets. I think these lads are gonna stay here for the day. I've got to shoot off to go and make sure the puppies are all right, because as you saw in my last video, um, the puppies are here. Um, and they're only, today's Saturday, um, my next, my last video you guys watched haven't, as it isn't going to go out until tomorrow night and this video is going to go out well, in a few days. So yeah, puppies are today three days old. Tonight they'll be three days old. So this, maybe four, I can't remember. So yeah, um, I need to get back to them, spend a few hours with them and then come back over here when the tide starts ebbing and uh, we'll get the next in until we get. So brilliant. Right guys, that's enough in a bit. Right guys, so we are here. There's only four of us today. Um, quite a lot gonna be going on actually. No worries. I'll get that one, Steve. You all right, half each? Lovely. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely wanna take, yeah. I don't wanna be driving home in my waders. I think that's everything. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Right, so this is where it's going to happen, guys. Um, this little creek in the Medway, which is crazy because we do our matches along that part of the river along there 
we were, we fished dead opposite on the other side at Laser Key. Um, but yeah, it's all quite scientific actually. Um, speaking to uh, speaking to Steve and um, speaking to Andy, and there's another lady here, which I'm really sorry, but I've forgotten your name. Um, so yeah, the plan is to put a fike net down in the creek, um, and basically, so what comes up. So what Steve was saying is the small bass and the small mullet they'll come in in the top top layers of the water on high as the, as the tide floods in, they will come in. Um, but then as they go back out with the tide, so do they, and they do a lot. Apparently, they do a lot less swimming. They float more, so they'll float in with the tide if that makes sense. Obviously, they're swimming too, um, but then they won't go back out on the surface. They'll go back out on the, on the, in the, the sort of like the lower parts of the water. So. That's the plan. Um, I'm, I'm hopefully going to get Steve to have a little bit of a chat on camera and explain a bit more because it's very, very scientific um, and it's a bit more than I've got in my head, that's for sure. Um, but again, when we get down there, um, I will start recording more of it and obviously the results is what we all want to see. We all want to know what's in the medway, which is, which is going to be great, hopefully. That is just an eel fishing freight net with an otter guard fitted in it, um, with a pair of wings on the front. The key thing about this is it's pretty small mesh. That is six millimeter in that end of the white bit, eight, and then ten millimeter. They're commercially derived fight nets for eel fishing, but normally they have a single leader in the centre. This has got a pair of wings because you can see what we do. We're going to set it down so in the place of this channel here. Everybody know people that watch my channel, um, and I've got guys. I know you're listening. Um, you know my, my editing skills are not the best, um, and everybody knows that, which is why I watch my channel. <laughs> so, guys, this exactly that. Exactly that. My husband's really good at video editing. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, I may have to. I may have to get his number. <laughs> Thing that you mustn't forget when setting the fight net is to tie the end. Yes. Uh, because otherwise everything will just swim through. Disappear out. That's not what we want. So guys, just quickly, the reason the flight net is being set here is because as you can see, this little channel that goes out, this is just a natural channel, drainage channel, um, as Steve's just said, um, and it's, it's the ideal ideal place really to set the nets for, for hopefully ma maximum catch to see what we can find. Yeah. Um, and just to explain that a little bit more, the, the, the reason for the, we developed the method is we now know that when the tide comes roaring in, you can see it starting to come towards us, lots of baby fish are just under the surface, just following the edge all the way up. They'll ignore this completely, they just go straight past it and round it. But when they're leaving, they're very worried about bird predation, so they want to find the drainage channel, the deepest part, and go out that way. We're just going to block it in the V shape. It's precisely why we're doing it this way. And these eel fight nets are often set out for 12, 24 hours, you know, one or two tidal cycles. We don't need to do that because these fish are coming in on the tide and they'll be gone again as the tide drops. So it's really quite a sweat. See, things like that, if you get, if, for, for a couple of tides, especially in this sort of weather, it'll probably be fine for the eels because they, they, they'll survive fresh water on land. Yeah. But smaller fish, if you were to leave it out o over the low water, they're not going to do so well, are they? How wide do you open this? Just stays in the channel, does it? Or does it go out a bit further? It has a bit, has a little bit. It, each meat system is different. It depends on, on the ground conditions you've got. You know, we can't do exactly the same thing. But as long as it's reasonably wide, that's
What do you do? Do you hook these on to keep them up, do you? Hook the yeah, tags on over the... So we can put them back, obviously. So it's a quite the beautiful thing about this side is you can be watching up there and say, "Now we go and get it." Yeah. As long as the bottom is on the on the ground. On the ground. So they are weighted, aren't they? The bottom of these nets. Yeah, they are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's got a lead line at the bottom, the top. There we go. Yes. If we got time, Steve, sorry, yeah. just in layman's terms, could you just quickly explain to the guys watching yeah. what the purpose of this is um, in well, layman's as a, terms? As a method. Well, no, it, it, as, a, as a whole, as a whole okay, thing, yeah. the reason we're here today and what you're doing, um, I know you've explained to me already and I should have been recording them, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure, you want to do that now? If we can, if we've got time. Yeah, we're not... that's fine. I mean, you can see the water starting to come in. Yeah. We've got a few minutes before we start. Yeah, no, well, go for it when you're ready, Steve. Okay. Um, well, the first thing to say is we're standing in a highly artificial circumstance here. This was once a tidal creek. You've now got a major housing estate being developed around us. But what's good about this site is what the engineers could have done originally, which is block off the end and more housing. We've kept the creek inside this concrete tree. And what's really unique about this site is you've got the whole original intertidal gradient going from the upflats down there through salt marsh to trees and terrestrial grasses at the top of it. Now, 3,000 years ago, the whole of the Medway would have looked like this everywhere. We've just slowly removed it for shipping and navigation uh, and all sorts of other purposes. So this becomes quite a unique area. We've got other areas like this being developed in other places around the country, but they tend to be small because the housing and industrial development is right up to the riverside, so you can't get much. Here we've got 150 metres of the original, uh, original ground surface as it would have looked, or recreated. Uh, several university students have been along and stopped this area with some salt marsh plants some years ago uh, and we're now trying to watch how fish utilise these sites and what we found from experience over the last decade or so is little fish really love these areas they're probably the optimal uh, nursery ground for baby sea bass and other species and how they use the site is still sites we're trying to understand but it's quite clever They'll come in on a flooding tide just under the surface, they'll go as far into the marsh as they can, where there's no predators and lots of cover, there's loads of food. As soon as the tide turns, they're off and out. But they come in on the surface and they leave on the bed. So the whole purpose of this fight there is to collect them through these two wings as they're going out. We can collect them out of that um, cod end, the end of the fight, process them, which is just counting the species, lengths, put them all back again. So there's no damage to the fish, we're just trying to understand what's using it. Uh, so this is our first real exercise on this site, but using techniques we've used on many other sites before. But hopefully through the Living River Foundation, we will be able now with citizen scientists to do these sort of surveys regularly. Brilliant. Um, because these sites are still developing. This won't stay still, it's still evolving. We want to see how fish use that with time. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Right, guys, so that is that. We are going to nip over to the other side and set out this other fight now. Um, and then any, 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 anything else that, um, that, that becomes obviously interesting, us walking around here is not going to be that interesting, so I'll bring you guys back very soon. Tide is a few hours away, so I'm going to nip home. Um, these guys are going to stay and obviously make sure the equipment's all right. But what I am going to do while I'm at home <coughs> is grab a bin bag or two and my litter pickers from the Angling Trust. Um, and yeah, all the time, while I can, if I see anything, I'm not gonna be able to clean this whole creek out, guys, because one, I haven't got time, and two, there's just far too much of it, I'd fill my van. 
but while I'm down here I will get as much of it out as I can um, so yeah hopefully guys you're finding this interesting oh, I am I think it's amazing and I can't see I can't wait to see what fish come up in that little net they're only going to be small fish but it's the species more than the size that we're uh, that we're looking for um, so yeah no it's all good fun it is all very very good fun um, and they are looking for volunteers so there's a very good chance that other people might be able to get involved in this sort of thing um, which is which is brilliant I think um, yeah right I will hopefully see you guys when I get back in a couple of hours look guys just quickly I just thought I'd um, show a bit of footage of Bets and uh, hello Bob Ups and the babies um, it's th they're a week old now well they will be tomorrow night um, but I would say that this one this is a little boy um, and he's He's probably the biggest so far. He's really, really got big. The size of him. It's, it's, uh, I say look at the size of them. They're, they're tiny for you guys. But obviously we've watched them grow since they first come out. And this little lump. Having a good old munch on his mum. Um, so there's a, there's a boy there. There's a boy there. And there's a boy there. And he's got a little girl and another little girl. They've all been named. Um, there's five of us in my house. Three from my three daughters. Me and my wife. Um, so we got Cosmo. We got Bertie, but he's been renamed Benny. Um, Cookie, um, Daisy, and Patch. Um, that was it, yeah. Yeah. Five little beautiful dogs. They are lovely. Betsy's been such a good mum, bless her. Come this time of night, she's absolutely knackered. Anyway, back on with that knitting. There. Yeah. Three minutes later, just pull it out. Just and just. All the tiny little fish are stuck in there. Yeah. Secondly, if Andy stands still there, say you've got the. Let's see, let's see. Just Say the tide's coming in. Um, the tide's coming in this way, basically along this that axis. If Andy stands on one side. No, I've got it wrong. So I'm just thinking. Of say the tide's coming in this way. Yeah. Towards you. If Andy stands on the other side. And I've started there, say next to it. Yeah. And I just walk this round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time you got there, you've got a miniature sign there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just there's lots of things you can do with it. It's so easy. Yeah, no, it's good. It looks uh, good fun. It's so light to carry anywhere. Yeah. So we use this at. Uh, this, is, this has not been used, has it? This is. No, we used it the first. Yeah, but this is. We used it the first time on Thursday. Oh yeah, so you did. Uh, yeah. And uh, again, the benefit of it. Um, a little bit of water, this is not far from high water, but a little bit of water starts to tip over the little gravel bar and go into a little pond. So this is one of the uh, outlets to the track. Grab the one like this. We just stood blocking this channel as it came in, with it billowing out behind us. And what you start to see is a shoal of small fish, only about this big one. Uh, eventually, we thought we had enough, so lifted up. But they were so small, they were going to go through this mesh. So I was keeping the bottom in the water while somebody got these little hand nets out and just scooping her out. And we found the young of the year common goby. And that's one of the fish that goes at the bottom. But when they're really small, that shoal is a tiny shoal. And again, as soon as the water had gone over that little gravel bar, there they were. Was it just, go was it just those gobies, not bass or anything else? No, we found some slightly bigger bass a bit later. Yeah. They? But this is another thing, is the gobies seem to be the first species to come in on the tide. Everything else is slightly more wary, it takes tends to take more time. But the goby being a bottom feeding fish anyway, it just does this extremely well. So we find we also find a hell of a lot of gobies when we're lifting rocks looking for crabs and things like that. Yeah. Um, some small eels, we find uh, blennies as well. Yeah, um, right. and that's, it's, 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 it's quite mad. When you lift a rock and you, and you put your hand in there feel for crabs, you feel something this sort of size and it's slimy, it makes you jump. It does make you jump. <laughs> Right guys, so I'm a bit late back to the party to be honest, no, I had so much worry, to do. Worry, uh, but, but these guys have been out with, uh, with what, what did you call this net? What was we the net? We call it a push net, an intertidal push net. Right. It's got a three millimetre mesh. Yeah. Right. But obviously, obviously it works. So guys, they've been out catching these. So this is a 15 mil uh, small bass fryer, um, which is, well this year's I take it. Oh yeah. This definitely, year's definitely this year's. Week, weeks old. Yeah. Weeks old. That is incredible. Hopefully the camera's picking it up because obviously it is very small, but yeah, that's amazing. But it's so small, it's even smaller than the best photographs we've got. Yeah. Because when <laughs> it gets slightly bigger, they develop a very strong line across the dorsal and the ventral edge. Yeah. Even though they're still transparent. He's so small, he hasn't got that yet. No. 
Uh, and with a magnifying glass in water, you could when it stops moving, you could just see the first door sloughing. Yeah. Up. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, I can just about see. If, right. Yeah, I just you about see can. the back door sloughing. He looks. Tail. It's strange because he doesn't. Obviously, he doesn't look like a bass, but no, no. He's even. Right. He, he just doesn't look proportioned to no. be a bass. You know. When they're a bit bigger. They get much thicker. Yeah. But that's still a lava basically. Yeah, it's but still, yeah. You know, it's, 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 yeah, he hasn't got rid of his... Uh, so were they all the same species that you caught? Well, we found a lot like that before. We found one common goby. Yeah. Um, which... I'll try and get him out of here for you. But if you've had him in there, you see it's totally different. Yeah. He's sitting on the bottom, he's got big fins that sort of... Uh, he sits on. Yeah. And he's got a lot of little brown and black dots, which are the body coloration of the adults. But he's already got them. Yeah, no, brilliant. You can see that is more silvery. Yeah, no, you can, yeah. Silvery. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Oh, good grief. That's Watch this one. Oh. That is a common goby. No way. You have just, yeah. Oh, you can, and you can actually tell as well. Yeah, yeah, and not only that, the way it's moving, yeah, it's jumping. The way it behaves, yeah. totally different. Yeah, it is 100 percent different. Hopefully, guys, you can see that, and you can see it's massive, massive fins. What they, it's like they use them yeah. to walk on. Exactly, they do. They actually walk on. That's right. They walk across the bottom on. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, there you go, guys. That's the two species that have been caught so far. Now, all right, they're not 10 pounders, which is what you probably all would have imagined, but. This is exactly what we're looking for. Um, yeah, and hopefully when the fight nets come in, we'll um, we we'll find some different species maybe. Yeah, I think we're saying that, that there aren't photographs of fry this young, so we're probably looking at things that people have never seen, seen on film before. Yeah. Certainly not. Well, you saw it here first then, guys. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. And it's, it's worth saying that although the common goby were absolutely certain of, the bass, as Andy has just said, nobody's got any good photographs of it. No. So that's what we think it is, looking at it with a, a magnifying glass in the water. Yeah, that's incredible. Really is incredible. So on, the, on the bass fry, if you get rid of it, well, you might not be able to see, but you can just see the start of that dorsal fin and the, the spines yeah. sticking out that give that. Yeah, yeah I, I, to be fair, I can just about see them. It looks a bit it looks a bit rough around the edges, doesn't it? Like you say, where the spines are just coming through. Well, also, you see, the way we just caught them, they've got a little bit of debris all over them, so trying to see a clean fish is really quite difficult. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. But you can see the two species. Oh, 100%, yeah, 100%. So even if you can't identify a fish that small, you can see by the behaviours and the general colour. Yeah, I mean, body I've, I've, I think seeing the goby, I would have always said straight away goby. Yeah. The bass, I would have, uh, looking at that, it reminds me of a pin white end just because of the length of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. just because of it's, it's, well, it's, got, it's got nothing to it, is it? It's just yeah, a long yeah. skinny fish, which does. But when that, when that bass sits down for long enough, the first dorsal with its spine just sits up a bit. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Um, but it's you know it's still it's still a provisional ID. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if we can get some decent photographs. But on Thursday um, at Who, when we were surveying at Padlow College, we were taking bass about one and a half times that size. Now by then they still haven't got any scales on them, but they've got this black line along the top, along the bottom, and they look slightly orangey, purplish. It's really? The scales started to fall. Yeah. yeah. To get the body shape or the body colour, sorry, just changes very slightly. Oh, brilliant. In fact, the same thing, have you ever seen um, thin lipped grey mullet when they're only that big? They're beautiful because they're rainbow coloured. Oh, I've never, the scales I've never form, seen them. And as they form, they're all sorts of different colours. So it looks like a, a rainbow trout, basically. They're weird. Brilliant. Did you want to take that, Andy? Well, guys, I'll bring you back in a sec. Yeah, and here we go. And a crab. And a crab, a couple of crabs. Not the best water possible, but we have got some. Uh, yeah, we're probably going to need that bigger bit to hold this eel, and you'll go straight out of there. Well, there's plenty of crabs. Right. Yeah. We get the bigger bin. Shall we? Is there much in there? Oh, what this one over here? You mean? Yeah, look, that one. Is that one? That, you're right with that one. To be fair, we don't really. Need it. He'll try and get out. Yeah. We don't have to keep him very long. Right. There we go. That's right. Oh, if you can just... Uh, that's the bass out. Come here, little dude. Yep, lovely. 
tell you what, so because the eel's a tough, tough old creature, let's get that bass measured and get him there. Get him out. Got, uh, take him back to the. Yeah, take him back up a little bit further up there, yeah? Yeah, just take him back a bit further. Well, nothing in that one, guys, that we didn't think was going to be in there. I kind of thought there would have been an eel in there, and I kind of thought there might have been a good shot of being a bass in there. Um, but it's still good because it's one of them things you never know. That is hound food. We better not mention that here though. <laughs> He's a lovely little fella. He's a bit rough. He's obviously been kicking about in the net, I would have thought. Perfect little bass. You reckon this is two years old? Probably this. Yeah. It's not a particularly big one. No. It's far too big for uh, last year's. Yes. So it's, um, Do you want to get a picture of that? Yeah, it's fairly small, too. Sorry about my disgusting hands. <laughs> so good. Wow. There we go. Cut it like that. Ooh, there we go. I'm going to have a total length. How many is uh, 195? I'll just do that again. We'll move. 192. 192. Nice little rest. Okay, so nothing else on there, is it? That. And a shore crab. And a shore crab. A male. Uh, I'll go and walk so him back uh, and uh, put him back. Put him straight back. I'll come back with you. I'll come down and give you a hand. It's flying out now. Flying out. Sorry if there's any wind noise, guys, on the camera, but we're out in the wilderness. Not what you can do about it. Say wilderness. Yeah, the, the river is the river's full of them. Yeah. We catch so many of that size up here. But you'll be coming around. And there's some, and there are, we have had some bigger ones, sort of three or four pound as well, recently, off these walls. And there we go. Take it back up and Nice slime eel. I'll tell you what, while you're doing that, I'll quickly get this crab out. If we can, it's because only, it'll only stink. Yeah, exactly. There's only a little one, guys. I'll quickly get this out, get them out, because there's a couple. Uh, I think the idea of a net is that you can't get it out. Uh, I'm gonna get back up and show you that eel. Uh. There they go. It's crabs. Yeah. Perfect. There we are. Would you mind grabbing that one too? Here you go. Got it? Yeah. This way, yeah? Yep. Did you manage to get a measurement? Well, basically, he's exactly from there to there to there. Oh, is it? <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I sometimes carry a small tape as well, but we really weren't expecting Let's have a little look. Just dump this, dump this net there for a sec. I'll do and I'll start looking at the other one. There we are, guys. I'm sure most of us have seen this. That is a common green eel or silver eel. Let's get hold of him, see if we can take a picture. Here he is. Slimy hands. <laughs> oh, nice. How long? I can't keep hold of him. <laughs> right. Trying to get a picture. Nope. Oh, yeah. No, it's not going to happen. Hang on, let me see if I can tip a bit more of this water out for you. I need to be able to get a bit of picture in the bucket. Oh, 
Oh, he's coming up. See, that was a good run. Yeah, that was good, yeah. <laughs> right, uh, I'll run this bucket back down. Um, can we release this heel now? Anything in there, Steve? Oh. Oh, it's full. A small eel on a bass? Right, you're finished with this eel, aren't you? Yeah. See that little fella? That water's warm. Feels really warm. Oh, and there's a flatfish in there, so there's a flounder too. Yeah, flounder. Oh, it's brilliant. That's one one thing we've definitely seen a, 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 a decline of in the river is the flounders. Catching you say that they, they seem to be much less common than they used to be. Yeah, we used to catch flounders all through the winter. That was the only really fish we went for when the cod disappeared. But now it's um, last year was terrible. I, I mean, in the medway for them, there was some about, but nowhere near enough. That's nice here, small eel. Nice flatty or two, and at least one bass. Oh, sorry, he's out of the slot. He was stuck in that yeah. ledge. Now, yeah, I think so. Oh, and a jellyfish. And if you just give them a bit of water, and we'll take them up and process them as well. That's brilliant. Lovely. Brilliant. Is that everything out of that one? Yeah, that's everything. Hold on, what's that? Oh, bit of rubbish. What? Right. I'll take them back over. Let's get a bit more water in there. Got a lot of walking in the mud. What's under the carpet? Anything? Crabs. More crabs. Female crabs. Put them back in their own. There's jellyfish in there too. Part of a jellyfish. Yeah, there's several actually, that's a small one. Big shore crab. Oh, Big angry one. Yeah. He hasn't long peeled actually looking at him because of the colours. He's very light. Very light and still quite transparent yeah, underneath. Yeah. This one might be one of the last <laughs> one three zero. Let's put him back in the river. Lovely little flounder. Yeah. And you'll know it as a flounder show. Watch this one once. I can't remember the one that's right there. Oh, that's called um, the common show. <laughs> Jellyfish, because we're looking at yesterday with these four rings on it. This is 160. And for somebody who hasn't done a flatfish ID before, yeah, just, if you just saw that, you really can't tell whether that's a flounder or a place. We can, but there's one sure far away. If you run your finger up the edge here, it's like uh, it's just very, very rough. Right. Whereas the flounder is sorry, the place is completely smooth, smooth and the place is sort of rounder in its body shape. Uh, as well. Another thing is the head. The head, yeah. It's got a lot of little, little um, raspy things on the head as well. But you'll find them both in this part of the estuary. So did you have time to get the measurements for both things too? Mm. It's another crab that hasn't long peeled to be fair. Did you manage to get the measurements for those two? Uh, no. So your flounder was 160. 160. 160 the and the bass was 130. 
130. That bass is. Uh, uh, flounder. Bass is last year's bass. Halfway year. through the second year. So we've had summer this year's, we've had last year's, and the year before with yeah. the bigger one we just had. Yeah, so that, yeah nice. Oh, and just one. Yeah, shrimp. Shrimp. Yeah, actually, that one is. It's not actually shrimp, it's prawn. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, that's something I never, can never determine. The shrimp determine. is the one that crawls on the bottom. Right. The shrimp actually swims up in the water. But right. they're often in the same place at the same yeah. time. And when you, when you cook them up, yeah. you couldn't oh, tell. Right. Well. But they're just two different species, yeah. The jellyfish is a common, common jellyfish, or rarely or something. See the way this thing is swimming? Yeah. It's, not, yeah. it's not the same as prawn. As well, shrimp. that jellyfish thing. Very shrimp. mild shrimp, very mild shrimp. Sting. sting. Very mild sting. It's not there, one of the toxic There's ones. loads of them in the basin at, um, uh, what's it? Stick them in, in there. In, uh, yeah, Chatham yeah, Marina. Yeah, I'll stick them in there. So, we'll, try and, um, we'll try and get the eel into here. You'll oh, hate it. There's a sweet wrapper there, is that? Where are you, little fella? I don't want to touch so, um, it. He'll go himself. Yeah, he'll there he goes. It. Now look, just, just lay, lay, that's it, that's it, oh, what a blimey. Well, I'll put him down as 35. Oh, can I take a picture of Yeah, of course. Come on, let's do it again. Go, 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 go. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah. Not quite, or oh, just over one box length. Yeah. He's actually almost exactly box length, yeah. It's yeah. bigger than 30 centimetres. I wonder if I think I'm going to reverse. Now, in my experience, the eels can actually be living in here. Could be. Yeah, 100%. They, they, they'll just stay in the damp ground quite happily. Because everything else is coming and going. Okay. And I, think, right. no, don't, I think that is it, guys. Yeah, There's a couple of jellyfish and some and crabs. Some crabs that's right. Uh, well, we're saying it's the length of that box. It's bigger than 35 centimetres. So, uh, if you can just say box for now, we know oh, what right, it means. Box. There is there is more shrimp in here. But you're not worried about them, are you? No, no, no. no. Uh, I've, I've written down shrimp. Uh, Actually, just pour them in, in, in oh, just yeah. in, just in case there's a mm -hmm. one of them. Yeah. Uh, in with the shrimp. More jellyfish. More, yeah, there's lots yeah, more. Lots oh, small I'll just I'll tip it in. Yeah, go on. It's easier. Oh, I'll just lift it yeah, just, small jellyfish. Just a couple of crabs. Um, yes. Where were them shrimp? So there's another there's shrimp one, there. Yeah, small one. And there's another one there. Yeah, that's right. And they're all the same. They're all. It's, it's the estuarine prawn they're called. Estuarine prawn. Yeah, I haven't seen the common shrimp. Those are all estuarine prawns. But there we go. Lovely. All day Put everything day. back. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, you know when people had the shrimp fisheries on the camera two hundred years ago, massive shrimp fisheries at places like places like uh, Gravesend and down. All the way along the coast, there, species on the lower half. Um, but by the time you cut them off, oh, I walked down with you, Andy. Oh. Right, guys. So that is that was that was it. Um, I mean, it, I, I to be honest, I, I expected to catch those fish in them nets. I expected there'd be this, this species that we saw growing up on the Medway, fishing the Medway all my life. Um, but. Again, it's one of them things you never quite know. No, you don't. And that's, that's what's exciting about what we're doing. Exactly exciting. That is exactly what you want. Do you want me to take that? You've got yeah, my no, fans. Okay. You good? Yeah. <laughs> Perils are wearing a slightly yeah, different Slightly, thing. yeah. Um, but hopefully, guys, I'll be invited back and um, we can maybe see some other different species again another time. Let's get that flounder flipped over. Go on. Here we go. Come here, mate. I can't believe how warm that water is. That feels like bath water. It does, I was really, really does. Surprised at how warm that was. Really does. I mean, I'm not going to go swimming in here because it, no. it's disgusting. But and it's the midway. But there you go. There you go. What, right, right, guys? So that was that. Um, well, massive thank you to Andy and Tanya. I know Tanya's not here today, but um, for inviting us down. And hopefully, we'll get to see a, uh, see a few more things like this and work with them a little bit more. Um, and, and, and see what happens um, yes thank you guys we'll see you on the next one alright guys really sorry for the wind noise on this video and I'm sorry for the lack of information I gave as much as I possibly knew hopefully you got the gist of it we will be doing more and next time I will be much better prepared and hopefully can explain a bit more to you in a bit